Hi, I'm Richard from Electric Classic Cars, and on this week's episode, sponsored by Mauser Electronics and Kemet, we're going to give you an update on Bug Zapper, the Pikes Peak race car, and also give you guys an opportunity to get your name on this car and go up Pikes Peak with us. Stay tuned. All right, so. Pikes Peak organizers are doing something this year that they've never done before. They're going to run Pikes Peak in reverse. So we're going to turn Pikes Peak into a gravity race. No, 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 absolute rubbish. But what we have done, if you remember on the last episode, we had that amazing analysis of the aerodynamics improvements we need to make to Bug Zapper from Kate Speed Project. Click on the link above if you've not seen that episode. So we had to implement all of those things. And that's what we've done now. So I'll give you a little bit of a tour of all the aerodynamics mods that we've done since the last episode. Okay, so we'll start at the front, which is very dirty, but I'll explain why in a minute. Uh, we'll start with the splitter. So we've got a very specific design brief from Catesby Projects as to how the splitter should be um, with this curved bit at the front, the angle at the front here, uh, the side walls here, and uh, these uh, gurney flaps at the side here. So all of this has very specifically been designed around their remit, so that's now on. Uh, the other thing that we've got as well is the wing tops. So again, there's a little flap at the, at the top here just to create um, or push the air slightly over, and then this vent system here or, or these slats if you like then allow the positive pressure in the wheel um, wing area here to be released and pulled out as well that's why this is creating a negative air here also to help suck it out so they're all on the front and the rear wings that's pretty much all the changes in the front um, I'll show you what we've done in the back now at the rear pretty much looks the same I think it's got that huge massive wang but the main difference is the angle of attack of the wing so uh, what we've done is we've changed the angle to be the exact angle that KSB projects in their aerodynamics report told us it needs to be and it looks a little bit weird I mean you probably can't see it on camera but this actually is sloping slightly upwards um, and then the angle of attack of the rear is, is even more. And the reason being is they wanted the um, primary and secondary wings actually to work as one. So the way that this curves, it actually curves as one. And the reason why this is slightly tipped upwards is because the air coming off the um, body here, as it comes down, slightly goes downwards. So this is to work in conjunction with the way that the air is flowing off the roof and also the, um, uh, not the splitter, what's it called? The uh, diffuser underneath as well. So this and the diffuser work in harmony. The only thing we've not finished at the rear is this, because I'm in two minds where to put it at the moment. Maybe comments below. Should we, should we put this here above this or shall we put it where it's supposed to be which is on the top of the window there i'm in two minds where to put it at the moment so well, there i think you're right in there yeah see i i prefer it at the top here oh. it just, it <laughs> put just, it like there then <laughs> it hide, hides this but i don't know i'm i'm 50 50 on at the moment so comments below where should we put that should we put it above or should we put it where it's actually supposed to be which is above the window there um, and obviously the only other thing we've done at the rear as well is the wing tops have got the vents in. So yeah, that's pretty much it at the rear. Okay, so we're underneath the car now obviously and this is where the, all, all the other aerodynamics is happening. And it's quite an important bit of aerodynamics because you can get just as much uh, downforce, if you like, underneath the car as you can on top of the car. And that's what the situation with bug zappers. So these strakes here, we've got one, two, three got six of them and they are manipulating the air if you like from the middle to the outer of the underneath of the car and they're creating a negative pressure area around where my head is which is a midships so this is pulling the car down underneath right where i need it which is underneath my bum now that was the aerodynamics but before we go any further a little bit of a word from our sponsor for this episode which is kemet now, Kemet has 60 years experience of providing automotive grade electronic component solutions and their 
products are used in most of the building blocks of any electric vehicle from chargers to DC to DC converters and other components like that. Kemet's parts have been proven on the road and in the lab, uh, have an extensive track record of reliability and have been verified to work under the harshest of temperatures. You can find their components in all components within EVs, from embedded controllers, BMS systems, which is obviously battery management systems, inverters, DC to DC converters, onboard charging, and even wireless charging technology, which shows the innovation that they are striving for. So lots of Kemet's cutting edge products and technology can be found in electric vehicles, products like sensors, capacitors, transformers, etc. And we'll put some links in the description if you want to find out more. And don't forget, lots of Kemet's products can be found at Mauser.com. And we'll also put a link in the description for that. Now, anybody that's ever owned or had a race car or has a race car knows that it essentially looks like this most of its time. Race cars are usually 90% of their time completely stripped apart and they're being worked on. It's only very rare times, normally around about race time obviously, that it's put together and it looks like a race car. So why is Bug Zappa looking like this? Well the clue is here and here. I've been to Alton Park racing again at a track day uh, while Tim was swanning off skiing, so hence no episode I'm afraid. But from that track day, I learnt a lot. So the aim of that last track day that I did was uh, kind of an endurance test. I wanted to just go out for as long as I could until I couldn't, essentially. I wanted to find out what's going to give up first. Is it going to be the battery pack runs out? How far will we get if that's the case? Uh, will we need to stop because the battery gets too hot or the motors get too hot, etc. So it was an endurance test. I literally just went out and stayed out on track until I needed to come in. And the conclusion was that we should have enough battery capacity to get up the hill. So we did something like 40 kilometers of full on like, you know, all out track time. And Pikes Peak, I think was 20 kilometers, is it? And they have to put it on the that. screen. Um, so we should have enough to get up the hill. Um, I, ha I came in literally two laps um, before the end because the temperature of the battery was getting a little bit higher than I'd like. It hadn't hit the red zone, but it was just getting high. So as a precautionary, I came in. But yeah, in conclusion, I'd say the car was good to go to Pikes Peak, but I did have a couple of concerns. The first one was, it's too powerful. Never thought I'd say that and Tim's got a surprised look on his face. Um, but yeah, it was a monster. Any time I was breathing on the throttle, the tires were lighting up and it was just uh, four wheel burnout essentially at 80 miles an hour, even when I was breathing on the um, throttle. So the keen eyed amongst you will notice I've changed motors. Now, while you're picking yourself up off the ground because I said the phrase, I had too much power, it still feels wrong coming out of my mouth. Let me explain why. So this is my old setup. This is the Tesla um, Model S P100D motor pair. Uh, this is the rear and the front. And obviously, if you've been following this series, you know that the ultimate plan was to just dial the car in with this setup and then eventually go to a Tesla Model S plaid setup. So why am I seemingly going backwards to a less powerful setup with a Model 3 performance setup? Well. Let me explain. So apart from the fact that, you know, whenever I breathed on the throttle, all the tires were just lighting up and it was just a rocket ship throwing you forwards, but also quite a handful because it was sliding about quite a bit. I've done some investigations on the Tesla Model 3 performance going up Pikes Peak and the Tesla Model S Plaid that went up Pikes Peak. And the sector times were pretty identical, which means what's the point of going with a Tesla Model S Plaid setup when the Model 3 setup can get you the same times. And that's kind of my thinking, but there's more to it than that. Now there's some other advantages with going with the Model 3 performance setup over that um, Tesla Model S setup, and that is weight. Now, anytime you're taking you know, a weight up the top of a hill, you're expelling energy 
and if you can take less weight then it takes less energy to get up the hill so the fact that we've got quite a small battery pack so 45 kilowatt hour battery pack to give it the best you know um, effort if you like uh, or best chance of it getting up the hill with that amount of energy the less weight the better so by changing to the model 3 uh, performance setup I'm going to refer to a whiteboard over here because I've made the numbers um, so the original large Tesla drive unit and small Tesla drive unit that was in the front weighed 223 kilos and now with the Model 3 setup it weighs 161 kilos so essentially just by swapping to the Model 3 motors we have saved 62 kilos in weight but that's not all and the other advantage of going with the Model 3 performance setup is they are permanent magnet motors rather than the induction motors of the Model S, which in short means they're thermally more efficient, or to put it in other words, they'll guess, get less hot. Um, so, um, as a lot of electric cars seem to struggle with heat um, at Pikes Peak, with either the battery or the motor getting hot and then it starts to derate, anything that can reduce the thermal load um, in the car is a good thing so putting in more thermally efficient motors I think is a good move now that also has another advantage is the Model S um, radiators so this is the uh, all our cooling by the way is made by Ali Sport so all our radiators on the race car are Ali Sport thanks to those guys for those radiators because they work fantastic um, so this is the size of the radiator for the Model S side of things because we have to do some calculations obviously it's not just guesswork we're trying to figure out well, how much heat and energy do we have to actually get rid of and that determines the uh, size of the radiator air flows pump sizes etc so this is the setup for the model s performance motor pairing and this which is noticeably smaller is the um, radiator setup for the model 3 performance setup but not only that but also we've been able to reduce the size of the header tanks so that is model s performance this is sorry uh, yeah model s performance this is model 3 performance so there's a weight saving um, not just from the motors but also the cooling system however because the air is so thin at Pikes Peak we are still going to take this setup as a backup just in case we're still running into thermal um, uh, efficiency issues or it's basically getting too hot on the hill so we'll take the bigger setup as a backup plan and whenever the race car is apart I always take the opportunity to try to look for ways to improve bits and pieces as well and I've gone on a mission to lose weight on this last you know strip out if you like I've literally gone down to every little detail where we can lose weight and one area I've uh, found is actually where the roof scoop directs the air down and into the rear air box where the radiator is previously we had this lovely engineered aluminium ductwork if you like that was taking the air from the top up there down there but it weighs quite a bit as as beautiful engineering as that is this elephant trunk hosing does exactly the same job but a, a fraction of the weight so and that's weight up high as well which you never want really want in a race car you want any weight as low down as possible so that's gone and this is in and before we go on at the rear as well because this is the new uh, the new header tanks um, they will sit around about there there's three takeoffs on here whereas previously if I grab these down here these are three little pumps like the three little piggies uh, previously we had one pump for the battery coolant system and another header tank and another single pump there for the motor and inverter coolant system and then we had things like these y pieces here which would take that single output and then split it to go off to the front motor and the rear motor or the three battery packs what we've changed is I now want individual pumps for the individual components. So there's three pumps here, which uh, will be attached to the bottom of the header tank here. One pump for each battery pack and one pump for each motor. So there'll be two pumps um, on the other header tank over there. So that will then hopefully improve the coolant efficiency side of things as well. So 
I think that's pretty much it. So now let's have a chat about how you guys can get involved in this Bug Zapper race car and get your name on the car going up the hill. Now, so far on this Bug Zapper build, you guys out there have been a spectator, if you like, but I want to I want to take that a little bit further. I want to give you guys the opportunity to become part of the team, if you like, and part of the car. So I've set up a GoFundMe page where you guys can get through a small donation your name on the side of the wing here so we can take you up Pikes Peak with us and if we fill the sides of the wing we're going to put the names all along the back on the rear of the wing as well so go to the link in the description as a GoFundMe page there and hopefully you'll see your name on Bug Zapper. So just a little bit of wiring tidying up to do because obviously changing over to the Model 3 motors means we have to redo all the wiring and control systems for that. Uh, so I've got to tidy up all the wires, I've got to finish off the coolant lines, put the radiators back on, basically a load more work for the rest of the day and Tim's just realised he's going to get roped in to help me for the rest I, of the afternoon. I'm washing my hair. No, it's not, that, that's going to take, what, five seconds with him out you've got <laughs> on your head, mate? So, yeah, we've got a load more work to do on this. Hopefully the next time you see it, it'll all be finished and we'll be doing another track day because it's got to go in the container early April to make it in time for Pikes Peak testing, etc. So only got about another month of it in the UK. So test, 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 more of that to come. Um, but, yeah. On that note, um, it just leaves me to thank our sponsors for this episode, Mauser Electronics. So go to mauser.com for all your electronic components needs. And thanks to Kemet as well for sponsoring this episode. And hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll see you on the next one.